Hey everyone, today we're making pan-seared pork tenderloin with saffron jasmine rice and apple chutney. I'm Chef Levi, and you're watching Publix Aprons Cooking School Online. We're gonna start with the chutney, and the first thing we need to do is slice our apples and dice them and get away from the core. We're gonna use two different kinds of apples for this recipe. We're gonna use a tart baking apple and then a sweeter, more eat out of the hand apple. And what we're gonna get is not only a different flavor, but a different texture when we finish this up. So first thing I'm doing is I'm taking all these apples, these tart apples here, and I'm actually cutting them into what I call a plank. And then I'm gonna take that plank, cut it into a baton, and then turn that into a dice. I'm gonna cut that around, remove the core. Then we're just gonna make sure we safely stack these up and cut out our batons. Now that we got our apples diced, we can go ahead and start working on this chutney and reel. So we have a little bit of grapeseed oil here. We're gonna add into a medium-sized Dutch oven over medium heat. We're gonna let that heat up for just a second. And then we're gonna add in our cumin seeds. Uh, we are using the whole seed spice here. It's gonna have a lot of essential oils in there that are gonna come out while we cook and just add a lot of flavor. We're gonna start stirring these around. About 30 seconds, we wanna make sure we don't burn them, but we wanna make sure we get all that flavor into the oil, which is gonna transfer over when we add our rest of our ingredients. Now that's cooked a little bit, we're gonna add in our diced onions. Stir those around. And then our diced apples as well. And the last bit we're gonna add is our garlic. We wanna make sure that our garlic gets in there and doesn't burn, so we're gonna add that in kind of last minute. Probably about a minute to two minutes of stirring to make sure all these flavors kind of cook down a little bit and come together. So there's our garlic. And just make sure you stir this steady for about two minutes. We don't want anything to burn, but we want to build all those flavors together. While this is uh, cooking down for the next couple minutes, I'm going to grab the rest of the ingredients to finish the recipe. All right, the apple's been cooking for a couple minutes, and I've assembled the rest of our ingredients here. We're going to go ahead and get some spices in here and to toast off as well. Got some chili flakes. They're going to add a nice little spice to this. We're going to mix those in really well to make sure they're mixed throughout the whole dish. Then we're gonna add in ground ginger. It has a little bit of a spice to it, but also has a little bit of natural sweetness to it as well. Add a great flavor to go along with these apples. Next, we're gonna add some garam masala, which is a spice blend known in North India. It's kind of like a curry, about the same thing. And then we're gonna add in some turmeric. Nice flavor, very familiar if you've had madras or yellow curries, same kind of thing. I'm gonna mix this up really well, make sure that they're all over the apples and get a little bit of time on the bottom of the pan to make sure we're toasting those spices and enhancing their flavors. Now that they've mixed in pretty well, I'll let that set for a second. We're gonna add in some vegetable base, which is gonna season this with a little bit of salt in there. Mix that in real well. And then last, we're gonna deglaze the pot. We're gonna make sure we're gonna scrape down all the bottom, get all those flavors out of there. With that, we're gonna use a little bit of sherry vinegar. It's gonna add a nice tartness to it and a lot of flavor as well. So add that in carefully. And make sure you scrape and stir the bottom up very well. This will help combine everything and get any flavors that you cooked onto the bottom of the pan into the dish. Now we can finish up. We're gonna have some dried cherries here. It's gonna have a nice natural tartness and sweetness as well. And then to kind of balance out that nice vinegar and that tartness, we're gonna add two different sugars here. We have some regular granulated sugar for sweetness, and then we have some brown sugar that's not only gonna add some sweetness, but it's gonna have some richness from the molasses that's in it. We're gonna make sure all these get combined. And then we're gonna leave it on medium heat. We're gonna cook it 10 to 15 minutes. What we wanna do is we wanna reduce and evaporate some of this vinegar in there and make sure those apples are nice and soft and cooked up good. All right. Now that we've got the chutney working, we're gonna begin on our rice. We have a nice sauce pot here, it's got a good lid to it. We're gonna start by giving that medium heat, add a little bit of grapeseed oil to the bottom of that, and we're gonna start building our flavors right now. We're gonna start with a little bit of diced onion. We're gonna add that in there and start sauteing that. Give that a good stir. Now we're gonna add in our garlic. 
about a tablespoon's worth of this as well. Make sure we stir that around, get a little bit of flavor to it. Make sure we get a little bit of heat on there. We're going to add into that some saffron. Saffron, not only is it an amazing spice, it's also going to color this as well. It's actually the most expensive spice by weight in the world. It gives a great yellow tint, a great tea-like flavor to everything. We're going to move that around, get that in there. You can smell the saffron right away. Next, we're going to add in a little bit of turmeric, which is going to add another bit of that yellow color and also some nice flavor. There we go. It's toasting on the bottom of the pan, adding that flavor there, which we can deglaze up later. And now one of the most important steps I find is to actually toast your rice off. So we're going to add our rice in here, toast it in the oil, build flavor, and add flavor to the rice at the same time. So that toasting is going to give it a nice nutty flavor. And also we're mixing around with the garlic and the onions and the saffron and the turmeric and all make sure it combines just to flavor the whole thing. Next up, a little bit of salt and pepper. I think it's really important to season ahead of time. That way at the end when you're trying to fluff your rice, you won't break up the kernels too much trying to season it at that point. So we're going to add in some salt and pepper, a little white pepper. Give that a nice stir. Let that toast for just a second, and then we'll add in our chicken stock. And at the same time we add our chicken stock in, we're going to deglaze the pan as well. So it's going to pull any flavors that are stuck to the bottom, add it to our dish. So add in the chicken stock, give it a nice stir, making sure we're scraping the bottom. And another important element is to make sure that we're getting all these rice kernels down into the stock to make sure they're going to get cooked up as well. Just going to scrape down the sides, scrape up the bottom. Then we're going to put a lid on this, increase the heat, and we're going to look for some steam to come out. And that's one of the really cool parts about this dish is you see the steam, we pull it off the heat, we let it cook with the natural heat left in there for about 20 minutes. You end up with perfect rice every time. Now we're going to move on to cooking our pork tenderloin. What we've done is we've trimmed it up and we've cut it into about three quarter inch medallions. First thing I want to do is get a large saute pan over about medium, medium high heat. We're going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. And we're going to add a little bit of butter in there. Now both of these things are for flavor, but that olive oil is actually going to help make sure this butter doesn't burn. While that's melting and getting ready, we're going to go ahead and season our medallions here. So we have a little bit of salt. We're going to put it on both sides. So we're going to make sure Get a nice even coating of that, and then a little bit of ground pepper here. And then we're going to flip this and do both sides. You want to make sure you season both sides of your proteins whenever you're cooking. Now that our butter has melted and some of the foam has subsided, we're going to add in our pork tenderloin. You want to make sure, and you're adding them in the pan, you don't have them too close to each other, have a little bit of room. That way that you're getting a nice sear and not just steaming the pork. Sizzle is always a good sign that you did your job right. You got your pan at the correct heat. And I would just wait three or four minutes, get a nice crust on there, and then we're going to give them a flip. Well, it looks like our pork's about ready to turn. So you can check this in a few different ways. What I like to do is just give it a light tug. If it pulls up freely, that usually means it's a good sign that they're ready to flip. And then you can see that nice browning on there. That's a definite sign that these are ready to go. So we're going to flip them all. Then we're going to give them another three to four minutes on the other side. We're looking for 145 degree internal temperature, and then they'll be ready to eat. So while these are finishing cooking, we're going to add in our uh, herbs to our chutney here. And we're doing this last minute because we want to make sure these herbs don't cook down too long and they have that nice fresh flavor. So we have some cilantro. We're going to add that in there and then chives. So we're going to have some nice oniony chive flavor, and then that nice, like, almost citrusy cilantro flavor. Just make sure that gets nice and mixed in, and it's ready to go. Pork's finishing up, so we're going to let it rest on a plate. So I'm just going to remove it from the pan. We're going to let it set, and it's always important to let your proteins rest. It's going to give it time for it to cool down and redistribute all the internal juices to make sure you're your food stays nice and juicy when you go to eat it. All right. Once we have that ready, we're going to start by fluffing our rice, get that ready to plate. We're going to take our lid off, 
What we like to do is we call cut our rice. So I'm going to actually cut some lines in it, like I'm playing tic-tac-toe. And then I'm going to come around and fold everything together. It's going to make sure it doesn't break down the rice too much. Going to get a nice scoop of that right on our plate. Maybe a little extra. It looks delicious. Then we're going to add in a couple pieces of our pork right on top of that. And finish it off with this nice chutney. There we go. Perfect meal. All these tons of flavors here. We're going to give this a try. The best part. Make sure I get everything combined into one. Get a piece of the apple, a piece of the rice, a piece of the pork. Great sear on that pork, really good flavor from it. You get that nice sweet and sour from the apples and the, uh, the tartness of the vinegar in there and that rice. Really delicious. All comes together. It's a great single bite that really harmonizes all those flavors. We hope you take advantage of these great techniques from the simple preparation of the pork to amazing and fluffy rice and, of course, this delicious apple chutney. It's a home-cooked dish that is sure to make a great impression. Use the link to download this full recipe. And be sure to check out our other Aprons Cooking School online videos and subscribe for more great content from Publix. Thank you for watching.